A lot of us absolutely loved and still love Linkin Park because they have these deep lyrics that a lot of us can connect to. And in this video, where we break down Chester Bennington's lyrics for the song Heavy, I wanna try something just a little bit different. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is for anybody who is looking to improve their mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So yeah, I've I've been on a Linkin Park kick lately and just listening and listening, like every now and then I just go to like Linkin Park's greatest hits on Spotify and just start listening like crazy. And I, I always get the song heavy stuck in my head like, for some reason, it's one of the most relatable songs for me, so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to start out with this breakdown doing this. I know a lot of you have asked me to do some lyrical breakdowns on it. So anyways, a couple things. The first one is, I'm hoping, like heck, that Genius doesn't take this video down. I, I spent like two hours the other night trying to figure out a way to like upload like the music video and use little clips without it getting taken down, and every single test failed and just psh, got taken down. Like, nope, nobody can watch this, so hopefully, Hopefully this works. If it didn't work, you're not watching this. But anyways, so what I wanna do with this video, I wanna break down these lyrics, I wanna talk about how I can relate to them, and throughout the video, I want you to ask yourself how you can personally relate to these, right? These lyrics. But something I mentioned in a previous video about Billie Eilish, like, I wanna talk about solutions. Like, so many of us can relate to these lyrics about, about being in that dark place, but like, what's the solution? What's the solution? So. You know, I am not a licensed therapist, but I'm somebody who can relate to that dark place, that that pain, that internal struggle that Chester was in. And I'm somebody who is actively working on my mental health and I'm miles away from where I used to be in that dark place. So what I wanna do with this video is offer some solutions as we break down these lyrics. But if you're somebody who's struggling, like feel free to try some of these suggestions if you would like, if you're really struggling, make sure you reach out and ask for help, all right? Talk to your doctor, talk to a therapist, talk to anybody. I usually have some resources down below in the description. So how's your day going, whatever? And he goes, he goes, oh, fine. And then a few minutes later, he's like, you know what? I'm not fine. Let me tell you what's going on in my life. And he's just like. Then it was like, Brad would be like, dude, yeah, you know, like this is what I'm dealing with. And that was the type of conversation that started off most of these sessions. I think we all need that. I think we all absolutely need that. Like so many of us, like think about just going to the gas station, grocery store, wherever it is, and somebody's like, hey, how's your day going? And you're like, oh, I'm good, right? And you're like dying inside, right? Like this is something that so many of us do out of automation. Now, I'm not saying like go to your local like grocery store and like spill your guts to the cashier. I'm not saying that, but in my opinion, we need somebody, at least one person in our life where we can tell them how we're really doing. You know what I mean? Like that's it's super important. Something somebody told me a long time ago when I first started on uh, my mental health journey, journey of getting out of that dark place was, you don't gotta dance with everybody, but you gotta dance with somebody. I don't like my mind right now. Stacking up problems that are so unnecessary. Wish that I could slow things down. I want to let go, but there's comfort in the panic. I can absolutely relate to this. Like Chester talks about like kind of these thought traps that we get into, right? Like this, this is something that so many of us struggle with and something that I work on with my therapist is recognizing these cognitive distortions, right? Recognizing what my brain is doing. The other thing that really helps me out a lot is meditation. Right? When I can sit back and just meditate, and meditation is about, it's not about stopping thoughts, it's about watching your thoughts, right? So I can watch my thoughts just kind of go by like these clouds in the sky, right? And then I can say, okay, that one, that one is a bad thought, right? That one is maybe a, a, a not a true thought, whether it's like, you know, um, uh, some negative thinking, talking bad about myself, maybe it's like talking negatively and pessimistic about the future or whatever it is. Meditation helps me acknowledge that and then I can start getting into the solution. So when he talks about there's comfort in the panic, that's something so many of us can relate to. What I've realized like um, just through my own mental health journey as well as working with other people, um, at the treatment center I was working at and just talking to others is like that comfort in the panic, that's something that's very real. So like for example, um, I was diagnosed with depression, a generalized anxiety disorder and some other stuff and 
And like, I remember when my life started getting better, especially when I got uh, clean and sober over six years ago, like I remember when everything would be fine, my brain would start losing it, right? It would start freaking out. And I'm like, what the heck is happening? Like nothing is going on. And the reason why from my experiences is that there's comfort in that panic. Like I find this to be very common with um, children who grew up um, in a, a toxic household, right? It's what we're used to. That's one of the reasons why a lot of us get into toxic relationships when we get uh, older, because there's comfort in that, right? And what's helped me out is a lot of self-love, self-compassion, and realizing like, this is not okay. Like, this is not the type of situation that I want to be in. And it takes time for me, it took time for, for that, like my new comfort level is not being in a state of panic. And I drive myself crazy thinking everything's about me. Yeah, I drive <laughs> myself crazy because I can't escape the gravity. One of my favorite lines, one of my favorite lines is right there. And, and like where he talks about like, and I drive myself crazy thinking everything's about me. Like, oh my God, like this was such a liberating thing for me. And it's something I'm not going to lie. It's something that I still struggle with every single day. But we think everything is about this, like uh, about us. And if you check down below, there's a full, there's a full link to the um, genius uh video that I'm using clips from, but Chester talks about how like a lot of our own problems are based on our ego, right? Like for example, for example, have you ever been out in public and you hear people like laughing and you think it's about you? Here's another example I like to use. Like have you ever been driving and like stuck in traffic and there's dozens of cars around, dozens and dozens of cars around. Somebody honks their horn and you're like, what the heck, right? We think they're honking at us when like there's a good chance that they're honking at somebody else and we just happen to hear it. We constantly think everything's about us. Something that I find even, even more helpful that I realize is when somebody lashes out on me, I think it's about me. But like, I have to realize like, how many, how many people had like a rough start to the morning, right? Maybe they got into an argument with uh, a significant other or a family member or whatever. And then later on, I encounter them and they lash out at me, but it's not about me. It's about that situation, right? Like, have you ever had a rough day at work and lashed out at the people you live with? Whether it's a significant other, a child, or like maybe your parents called you and you freaked out on them. It wasn't about them. It was about the other thing. So something that that helps me is realizing not everything is about me. And as a YouTuber who gets a bunch of hate comments, I get some nice comments, but a bunch of hate comments, I I have to look at that and say, you know what, maybe this person's struggling. Maybe the person on the other side is going through a difficult time. Now, that doesn't justify their behavior towards you, but it helps me not take things so personal. I'm holding on. Why is everything so heavy? Holding on to so much more than I can carry. I keep dragging around what's bringing me down. If I just let go, I'd be set free. So right there, like, I keep dragging around what's bringing me down and what, if I would just let go, I'd be set free. Like, we know, like so many of us, like, we know, we know what the issue is. We know what we need to do. So there's something I heard um, a long time ago, which is common sense versus common action, right? Like it's common sense for a lot of us to do the things that are good for our mental health, whether it's therapy or meditation or having a support group or whatever it is. We know, we know. And if we would just let go and, and quit trying to do things our way, we'd be set free, right? Like, how long, how long do we sit in our own misery before we get help? Like, in my active addiction, I sat in that forever, forever, knowing that it was destroying my life. And when I got clean and sober and my depression and anxiety, like, I knew, I knew what I had to do. I knew I had to reach out to other people. I knew I had to talk to other people. I knew there were things that I had to do, but I didn't want to. And part of it goes back to there being comfort in the panic. Some people, what I've realized is we latch our our mental state, our negative mental state, whether we're sad or lonely or whatever, like we, we turn that into a part of who we are and we're afraid to get better because without this thing, who are we? You see what I mean? And I think that holds a lot of us back from getting better. I know I'm not the center of the universe, but you keep spinning around me just the same. When he says, you know, I know I'm not the center of the universe, but you keep spinning around me just the same. What Chester talks about in that uh, genius video is like codependent relationships, right? Like 
it's it's very difficult because a lot of mental health issues from my experience are ego driven, right? And we think everything's about us. But when you have people in your life who are enabling you or codependent, like it feeds into that. And codependents do this all the time, like for those in addiction, but not even addiction, but like with other, other mental health struggles, like people will be there all the time and they, they, they can keep us in a state of being sick, right? And then that feeds into our own sense of self-importance. But anyways, like, uh, I know a lot of us miss Chester just like watching that interview with him. It's just like, ugh, right? But I wanna do more lyrical breakdowns on Linkin Park. And again, I want you to let me know down in the comments below like what you can relate to, how you can relate. If you have solutions that you have found helpful for any of the things that we discuss, let everybody know down in the comments below, all right? But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And if you would like to become a patron, you can click or tap right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.